Today we're going to talk about UX research. UX research is where you get your customer insights. Obviously in user experience, the user comes first and we are not the user, but the idea is trying to understand what the trend is, what is important, what is significant feedback, what is a meaningful thing to react to or move towards. So to start everything off, we're gonna talk about our customer. Hi, I'm Kevin Hawkins. I lead UX training here at Growth Tribe, and today we're gonna to talk about all kinds of user research. We're gonna start with the four types, gonna go into empathy mapping. After we do an empathy map, we are really prepared to start going into customer journey maps and experience maps. First, we're going to jump into the four types of user research. I like to make sure we talk about them in pairs. So for pair number one, we're gonna talk about quantitative versus qualitative. Quantitative has the hint in the name. It's all about quantities, things you can count. The clicks, the page views, the downloads, the likes, the high fives. Whereas the qualitative is all about those soft skills, the things that people don't actually communicate with their actions, but maybe their thoughts, their feelings, hesitations, confusions. They might lack some confidence. They might have a certain tone of voice in their complaint or their review. And that's pair number one qualitative versus quantitative. For pair number two, we talk about attitudinal versus behavioral. You ever know that phrase, actions speak louder than words? This is all about that. Attitudinal is how people believe, what they think, how they see something in their mind, what are they used to, their memories. This is so much about how they assess, or not really what they do after that assessment. Whereas the behavioral is the actual actions they take. We can actually track and measure the clicks, the pages they've gone to, the number of referrals, the number of emails sent, the number of apps downloaded, and these are the things that really tie back to uh, quantitative usually. So now let's go into specifics. When we talk about quantitative, you might know some of these, such as A-B testing, multivariate testing, analytics reporting, search log analysis, Google Analytics, and Net Promoter Score. Now when we talk about qualitative testing, this is where we interact the most with the customers. We have usability testing, cafe testing, guerrilla testing, getting out there in the wild to really ask people questions as they go about their everyday lives, remote and unmoderated usability testing, face-to-face -face observation, and eye tracking. So no, this is a lot of different techniques and methods, so we add some links down below for you to dig more into them on your own time. Now that we've talked about quantitative and qualitative, how do we document all this information? The first part is capturing who the customer is. So what is an empathy map? An empathy map is what the user does, thinks, feels. It's everything about who they are and why we need to make certain decisions in our product based on who they are. Talking more about empathy maps, you wanna make sure that you're working with your research team and there's a lot of people and stakeholders involved. We dropped the link below for you to get more information about how to conduct them and the common template for capturing all those notes from users. Next up, we have experience maps and customer journey maps. The idea is that an experience map is about a mostly universal process like childhood development, pregnancy, things that are generally the same for most people. This is the experience of doing this thing. Whereas a customer journey map is about your particular customer in a certain scenario, going through a certain phase of uh, making a selection about a product, choosing a pair of shoes, buying a house. And so things are very personal and their experience as a customer within their certain environment, a certain scenario really does change their experience. To go deeper into customer journey maps and experience maps, we've included some links below. These are things you wanna to tailor to your company and to your particular customer subset. In addition, there is also what we call a service blueprint. So whenever a customer in any store or any application sees something, you know, like the shoes at the store are already on the rack, everything's ready to go, there is so much more that happens behind the scenes or back of house, and the service blueprint is that layer. What has to happen in logistics? What has to happen in sales and pricing and the cashier and opening the store? All of the things you don't see behind the camera are the parts of this that are going into the service blueprint to make sure that customer experience is achievable. There's also some links below to go deeper into that. There's really so much we can do when we're trying to do research as designers. Sometimes we have designers, sometimes we don't, but the whole idea is to figure out how we go from discovery, problem solving, solutioning, and scaling, all while understanding what the customer needs at the right time. The first thing you wanna do is search for options. What is the customer looking at? What are the alternatives that they are considering? We want to figure out what their values are. What do they care about? How are they deciding? How are they actually choosing to convert with one product, hopefully your product? And then from there, retaining them, keeping them happy, and making sure their day-to-day -day lives using your product, your experience, or service is a delightful one. Here at Growth Tribe, we talk a lot more about this in our course. So links below. Thank you for joining. And learn more about user research by watching our next video.